Hey everybody! Today we're going to be working on an oft overlooked Hot Wheel Red Line. It may be overlooked, but it sure is a bunch of fun. Don't go away. Hey gang, it's Paul from Fat Guy Productions coming to you as always from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. And yes, indeed, today we're going to be tackling a car that doesn't get a lot of love. You know, you don't see it on a lot of the channels out here. And that is the Hot Wheels Redline Peeping Bomb. Let's get right to it. You know, in the diecast world, certain cars don't get a lot of respect, and I think the Peeping Bomb is one of them. Uh, it's a a fun car with a little bit of heft to it, great design, and a cool little working headlight feature that makes it a really fun car, and yet it just doesn't get a lot of love. It's the Rodney Dangerfield of diecast cars. Well, I'm going to give it some love today, and we're going to take this peeping bomb and make it look like new. All right, let's get this sucker apart. We're going to use my shielded drilling technique to go ahead and get this uh, car drilled apart. Um, basically, we're using these Vix bits and the natural contours of the rivet and the, the base of the car to hold everything in place so we get a nice, neat, centered drilling. Uh, it works fabulous. Uh, if, you, if you're a naysayer, that's fine. If, if you've got something that works for you, I would say stick with it. But if you are like me and had trouble drilling cars apart, the, this may be the answer you're looking for. So we'll go ahead and drill the mushroomed end off of the posts. And once we're done with that, we can go ahead and get this car apart. All right, with a little help from my friend, uh, a tiny little flat-headed screwdriver, we can go ahead and pop this car apart. And the first thing that happens is the motor falls out. And that's because the motor is one of those standalone motors that is also a post. Here's the base. It's in pretty good shape. It's not going to be too big of a challenge to fix up. The uh, suspension board's in fine shape. You know, cap style wheels. No problems here. And here's where we're going to see some of the fun. We're going to see how these headlights work. So basically we have the interior and we lift it out and we can see the little headlight thingy there up in the front and uh, it just kind of fell out there. There's the windshield. And what it is is there's a little groove in the interior and the headlight thing just travels back and forth in this groove. It's trapped in there when we put the car together and the headlights have uh, silver headlights and black headlights. So you push it forward, you get one, pull it back, get the other. So Pretty simple uh, system, very effective. All right, and then we have the body. And other than a little bit of a shabby paint job, um, the body's not in bad shape. Uh, posts uh, came out fine, so we're going to be able to just drill down into the center of them with a, a drill bit to uh, uh, accept the, uh, the button head screws that we'll use to put it back together later. Uh, I did use a little bit of a file to kind of file it down, make sure it's cleaned up and the car will go back together nicely. And, of course, everything we do to the car body, we're going to have to do to the post on the engine, which, by the way, is not a lot of fun because it's very tiny. All right, with both posts drilled out, we can go ahead and tap them using the... Uh, uh, the tap handle that Bright Vision sent me to test out, which, by the way, at this point, I'm really, really liking. Uh, we're going to be doing a full review video on that soon, so keep your eyes open for it. All right, so we'll put a little drop of oil in the drilled-out post, and then we can uh, break out the tap handle, put the tap in it, and start to cut some threads onto the inside of the post. Right here, you're going to see one of the main reasons I like this tap handle. Just get it started, and basically I'm going to turn it not even a full turn. What was that? Not even a half a turn, and it held itself in place. 
That's because this tap handle is so light and easy to work with, there's no real weight to it pulling that tap out of the hole. So it doesn't take a lot to get this thing started, and once it's started, it's easy to work with. So I'm really enjoying it so far, and it's turning me into a hole tapper. A hole tapper. That, that is a thing, right? Well, if it wasn't, it is now. All right, so we've got the holes tapped out, both the engine post and the body post, and we can dig into my stash of screws, pull out a couple appropriate button-headed screws, and the little Allen wrench, and we'll go ahead and run them in and make sure everything is working the way it should before moving on to the next step. All right, the holes are deep enough, the threads are perfectly cut, the screws go in very, very nicely, and now I know that at the end of this build, when I'm putting everything back together, I'm not going to have a problem here. So, score. All right, now we can turn our attention back to this body, and we got to get rid of that paint. So, out comes the... Uh, a little vat of warm liquid goo. We drop the car in and let it do its magic. All right, after a little time in the vat, we took the car out and ran it over to the sink where we washed off the extra stripper. And then we kind of scrubbed it down with the toothbrush to get rid of, rid of any of the uh, loose clumps of paint. And now we can bring it back to the workbench and see what we're left with. As always, I'm going to hit it with the brass bristle brush to kind of homogenize everything. And, and right off the bat, I'm very stricken by how different looking this body is to the ones I'm used to working with. It seems very, very light. It is a very bright silver, almost like, it, almost like a chrome or something like that. It does not look or feel like any other car. So if, if there was something different in these castings, I sure would love to hear it in the comments down below if you know anything about this because it does not look like any of the cars I've done. And I've done quite a few at this point. So I'd love to hear if you know what's going on. Anyhow, it's still going to get brushed down so we can homogenize everything and get a really good look at what we have to work with and figure out what the next step is going to be. In my humble opinion, when you're doing spectral flame painting on cars, um, even if the finish is nice, I don't see any reason not to run it through the zinc plating. I had a car where I didn't zinc plate it. It looked consistent and even all across the board until I threw the paint down and toning immediately appeared. Why? Because the ZMAC underneath was polished and so the whole thing to my eye looked consistent, but it wasn't. It was two different metals right there. We had the Zamac and we had the, the zinc, and that was a problem. So I don't see any negatives to taking it uh, for a spin through the zinc plating process. All right, she's out of the zinc and washed off, and I'm just gonna hit it with the brass bristle brush real fast to make sure that it's looking uh, nice and consistent. And if it uh, is, then I can go ahead and take it upstairs and uh, finish prepping it for paint. Alrighty, I liked what I saw downstairs. So I've got the car up here at my workbench and we are hitting it with the 4.0 steel wool. This is gonna give us a nice, consistent, shiny finish and give us a really great base to put the Spectra Flame on top of. Very rarely do you see me pre-polish these cars before putting down the Spectra Flame. I think that the uh, the steel wool is more than enough. And if you get it too shiny, it actually kind of takes away from the realistic look of the Spectra Flame. So very rarely do I do that. But it is shiny. I'm happy with it. I've cleaned it off really well. So we can take it over here to my paint booth where, as always, we'll begin by misting down the booth with a fresh spray of water to keep any floaters from uh, landing in my beautiful new paint job. 
There is the peeping bomb. You can see it's got a beautiful shiny finish on it. And we're going to go ahead and just do a restoration on this. So we're going to go back to orange. All right, just like always, we'll go ahead and start the paint job with a tack coat. You should barely be able to see the paint. And the idea is to just help the paint grip to the metal. So we're putting on a very, very, very light coat. And then we'll let that dry. Then we can move on to some medium coats. And then we'll wrap it all up with a little bit of a wet coat to give us the final color and that beautiful, glossy, smooth finish. Uh, orange is one of those colors where I don't really have to worry about sneaking up on it so much because I think in the lighter shades it really doesn't even look orange. You really need to put a, a pretty uh, healthy covering of this paint on the car to get it to get that original Spectra Flame orange look. So I, I really don't worry about uh, sneaking up like I normally do. I just kind of lay the paint on thicker and thicker until I get the, the hue that I'm looking for. Now that is one spicy meatball. Look at that thing. Ah, oh, beautiful. I love it. And I love the color too. I'm a fan of the orange. So beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, I put the car body aside to dry. I'll bake it a little later today, and then I'll still leave it alone at least for another day. While that's happening, I can turn my attention to some of the other things, like this windshield. It looked worse than it was. Um, no cracks, no splits, no damage at all, but it just looked really grubby, and I was wondering just how well it would come out. In the end, it's going to come out great, so I'm going to start by... Uh, uh, hitting it up with some flits and a cotton uh, bud here and I'm just gonna work both sides of the windshield all the way around and get this thing polished out when you hear it start kind of making a little bit of a squeaky noise you know you're in the ballpark so we're just gonna hit this thing both sides get it nice and polished out before we move on All right, I think that just about does it with the Q-tip. So now we can go ahead and take a nice, soft microfiber towel, and we're just going to go ahead and polish this up and get it really, really shiny. I'll start on the inside so I can hold it on the outside, and then I'll hold it with the microfiber cloth while I uh, polish up the outside of it, and it should look beautiful and get us ready for the next step. You know, I, I use my gauzy all the time. I think in one of these upcoming videos, I'm going to have to use the uh, floor polish just so you guys can see it and maybe get an idea of how well it works as well. Uh, it's nothing to shy away from. If that's what you have, absolutely use it. So we take the windshield, we dip it into the gauzy, give it a nice coating, and then we're just going to wick off the excess so it doesn't pool and gum up. Then we'll put it into the trusty onion saver where it can sit happily and peacefully and not be attacked by a bunch of jerk dust bunnies. All right, with the windshield safely put aside to dry, we can turn our attention to the base. Now, you know me, I generally like to leave the wheels on until after all of this stuff is done. Uh, it will help protect, i.e., the hubs or the uh, back half of the caps, depending on what kind of car you have. So, as long as I'm going to junk them, I might as well put them to good use and leave them in place to help protect the... Uh, the parts I've got to reuse while I do these polishing steps. So here I am, I've just smeared some flits all over the base. I've got a polishing wheel attached to my uh, my little rotary tool here and I'm going ham on it and getting it all shiny. At the very least, as important as the base, but probably infinitely more important than the base, is the motor. 
and it's going to get the same polishing treatment. We are going to hit this thing every which way from Sunday, and we're going to make sure that it gleams. So when we put this car back together and you see that, you're going to go, wow. All right, with the base done, now we can go ahead and remove the caps off the wheels. And to do that, we're just going to run the edge of our razor knife between the back side and the cap of the wheel. Once you get it to drop in there, give it a little twist, and it'll just pop right off. When everything's working right, this is where capped wheels shine. But let me tell you something. When one of the backs is broken or the axle is broken, it really sucks because there's no fixing it. You have to replace that part. With cap wheels, it's a little tougher to do than if I just had a bearing here. But I still do try to do a little pre-straightening of the axle before I put the caps back on. And then I'll finish it up later. But I, I like to get in the ballpark right here because I've got a little bit better visual. And I can kind of see what's going on. So if you're having trouble with this step and, and working this tool, the trick is, is you've got to put some good pressure on the axle against the base of the car all right put that pressure on it and that way you can control where it bends okay so you hook the axle pull it down nice and snug against the base and then you can do the bending that you have to do to get this wheel lined up Okay, the base looks good, and I've got the new wheels on, and I can do a little more fine-tuning on the alignment of the wheels, and it rolls great. Everything is looking like a go, so we can go ahead and start thinking about putting this car back together. Now, the big lie that I'm not showing you here is that I got so excited about being close to finished that I totally forgot to deal with the headlights. Now the headlight device is a simple little piece that slides back and forth and it has essentially two kinds of headlights in it. A chrome set and a black plastic set. And my chrome set looked like crap. Well I would forgotten to fix that and I was getting all excited about putting together so I had to go back and fix that and then come back to put the car together. Well, anyhow, to fix it, all I did is I took my Maltau chrome pen and I colored in the, the silver parts with that, let it dry, and it looks fantastic. With that done, I can now go ahead and put the car back together. And so I first go ahead and put the glass on the base, uh, the, the interior, and then I slide the little headlight mechanism into its groove. And now very carefully, I'm just going to go ahead and put the whole assembly into the car body, check its alignment, make sure everything is right, everything looks the way it should, and it does. So now I can go ahead and take and set the base back on like so. Perfect. That looks really, really good. And now we can take and put a couple button head screws to hold the car back together. Okay, so I will tell you uh, my honest feelings about this. I hate these separate motors. And so this motor, you know, it uh, it's one of the ones where it's separate. And it's also the body post. So it is integral in holding the car back together. And I really hate working with these suckers. But uh, I got it tapped out and drilled and everything. And I can set it back in. And I can put a little button head screw in it. And screw everything back together in the back half of the car. And it'll be just like new. All right, with everything snugged up, we can go ahead and take a look and see where we're at. The only thing we're going to be short is uh, just a, a little bit of detail painting, but uh, we're just about done with this thing. And so far, I'm pretty happy with it.
Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to paint the taillight bar, uh, but against this orange, uh, the, the transparent red that I like to use from Tamiya, um, it just, it really wouldn't work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, X11 Chrome Silver from Tamiya, and I'm going to paint the taillight bar with that, let it dry thoroughly, then I can come back with the clear red and put it over, and it'll help make that uh, taillight really pop. All right, that's about it. So with no further ado, here is the finished product. And I think it looks awesome, in my humble opinion. I hope you agree. All right, there you have it, folks. The Peeping Bomb in Spectra Flame Orange. And what a fun little car. And, and one thing I've noticed, this is a car that's got a little more weight to it than some of the others, which is surprising because when you take it apart, the body seemed very, very light. All right, lighter than most castings. And yet when the car is together, the car's really got some oomph to it. And it, that's the kind of cars I like. I think that's one of the reasons I also liked the uh, fleet side. It had a little, little heft to it. And when you dropped it down on its suspension, it would bounce a little bit. And it just really was a fun car. And the Peeping Bomb has all of that. It was a fun restoration. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I'm probably going to have to do a couple more of these. I've got a bunch of them and uh, different colors. I, I think I'm going to be working my way through some of those because I really enjoyed this car. All right, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and click subscribe. Click the little bell, you'll be notified anytime I release a new video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I read everything and try and get back to you as best I can. All right, this is Paul from Fat Guy Productions. I hope you have an amazing day. And you go through it with your eyes wide open and see the beauty and the joy that surrounds you. It's going to be a fantastic day for all of us. So until next time, be good.